We'll call the Planning Commission meeting to order for March 5th. We'll begin with the pledge to the flag, please. Mm. I pledge allegiance to the flag, flag of the United, United States, States of America, America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, nation under God, indivisible, with, with liberty and justice for all. Would you call the roll, please? Yes, uh, Mr. Tiedemann. Here. Mr. Varga. Here. Mr. Cicero. Here. Mr. Cook. Here. Mr. Hatton. Absent. Mr. Perkovich. Here. Mr. Snow. Here. They will entertain a motion for the approval of the minutes of the February 13th meeting. So moved. Second. You're ready. And Mr. Tiedemann. Yes. Mr. Varga. Yes. Mr. Cicero. Yes. Mr. Cook. Yes. Mr. Perkovich. Yes. Mr. Snow. Yes. We have two public hearings this evening. The format we follow for the public hearings is we allow the applicant an opportunity to tell us what they want to do at a particular location. Then anyone wishing to speak in favor is afforded a similar opportunity. Then those wishing to speak against are given an opportunity to make their feelings known. So with that in mind, first public hearing this evening is a additional use permit to allow senior independent living villas at Manor Hills Drive. Is that applicant here? Gary, tell us what you want to do at that location. Well, good evening. Gary Bialis with Omni Senior Living, uh, Vice President Development. Well, this is kind of a combined project in a way. It's two parcels. Uh, we're here to talk about the rear parcel, I call rear. Uh, the front parcel is on uh, 90. Um, and actually, the picture we're showing up there now is actually the front parcel. The rear parcel is here. And these are, uh, are we're, it's part of our community in a way. They're, we call them villas. They're about 1,300 square feet, a one car garage, two car garage. And they're really for individuals. Uh, we look at it as continuum care. There are people that would move into a villa that still wants a garage, still wants their own house like space, uh, but they want a lot of things supplied to them, whether it's housekeeping, whether it's meals. Um, we, we offer a lot to these individuals, but they're not ready to go into a, I'm going to say, apartment atmosphere because even though it's senior living, they, you know, they have one bedroom, two bedroom, but they want more than that. So individuals that go to our independent living community, the average age is 80. If you're 70, they won't, they say, well, that's too, I'm too young to move there. But the villas, they're not. So the idea is, let have let's let them give them a place to live. They want they don't want their big house anymore. They want a smaller house. They want to have activities. Individuals the same age, and that's what we're trying to do in the rear parcel. Um, it's um, so I think we show 62 or 63 villas back here. We do have a clubhouse that goes with this. Um, sometimes these individuals don't even want to go to the main community. Uh, just as the. If I point out, when you look at our main campus, let's say, or community, it's assist, independent living, assist living, and memory care. Well, we have three entrances. We have three dining rooms. Uh, partly because individuals, if memory care has to, of course, be by themselves. But uh, people in independent living may not want to um, kind of be reminded they might be in assisted living someday. Same with the villains. So it's kind of progression of living and lifestyle. And that's what we're doing back here. Uh, there's a lot of green space here. There's a lot of wetlands. We worked around the wetland. So uh, you'll see there's, this process is almost 20, it's 20 acres. Uh, and we're putting 60, so we're putting like three per acre. On the, okay. Approximately. Anyone wishing to speak in favor? Anyone wishing to speak against? Okay, we'll close the public portion. Any comments from the administration? Kathy? I, thank you, Mr. Chairman. In, in addition to the... Uh, um, Overall staff report, I, I, we have not made any specific recommendations for conditions, uh, but I think in, in light of um, some information with regard to the requirements for independent living development, um, that they provide support services uh, as, as defined in the code, uh, such as uh, meals, housekeeping, social activities, and transportation to a minimum of 50% of the residents or as a percentage determined by the Planning Commission, I think that should be added as a condition that they will provide, in fact, provide those services uh, in compliance with the code definition. Okay. Did I see a shake of the head? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Actually, I, I submitted to planning a list of 
the services we offer. And I don't know if it was distributed or not, but it's. Oh, we, we're going to show it up right here. Okay, that's fine. So I'm, I'm fine with that because that's what we do. We okay. provide a lot of services to individuals. So any questions from the commission for the applicant? Well, and what we're doing right now is just a conditional use permit, right? Correct. Mr. Chairman? Yes. Uh, you have it on your overhead now, the community amenities worksheet. I would just recommend that maybe this be incorporated um, into the conditional use permit, rather than craft brand new conditions here on the floor, uh, perhaps just a condition referencing the uh, applicant's exhibit labeled community amenities, incorporate that as part of the CUP. They can always come back and amend it later on if, they, if there's any material changes to this, of course. But I think it'll be clear to differentiate this use from you know, just another. Okay. Uh, uh, Gary, you don't have any problem with no, that. No, I'm fine you? with that. Okay. So, any other questions for the applicant? Entertain a motion. A motion to approve, but we're only we're only talking about this specific condition. Yes. Th yes. This one condition, which is to add the. Uh, Community amenities sheet. Community amenity sheet. As, as a condition of approval for a conditional use permit. Is there a second? Second. Would you call the roll, please? Yes, Mr. Tiedemann. Yes. Mr. Varga. Yes. Mr. Cicero. Yes. Mr. Cook. Yes. Mr. Perkovich. Yes. Mr. Snow. Yes. Gary, that was easy, right? Item number two, condition is permit to allow multi-tenant senior assisted living and independent living at 8150 Manor Hills Drive. I see that applicants again. Yes, Gary, <laughs> Gary Bialis with Omni Senior Living. Um, this is project we actually got a preliminary approval uh, a few, couple years ago. Uh, we, one reason this hasn't moved quickly as we would, it has to do with the dealing with the VEC estate who owns the land. It's been... There's a lot of easements on this property that had to be taken care of, and we finally got there. But in that process, um, we realized that, because we've done a few projects, I mean, we have projects in Westlake and Strongstone, Copley is open now, Stowe, Solon is open in June. We've learned some things. One of the things we learned that, to be more efficient, we had three buildings before. They were all attached. We have independent living. We have assisted living memory care. We found out that it'd be more efficient for us and our staff and open up more green space, open area, if we went to a three-story building and another three-story building. So we had gotten a, I guess a variance, that's what you're calling it, for a three-story building prior. But our other two buildings were a two-story and a one-story. Assist living memory care. Now what we've done is memory care is on the first floor and assist living is on the second and third floor. So we've actually reduced the footprint um, have the same amount of units, but it's more efficient staff-wise. It's more efficient, better for site actually, because I have open spaces more. So I already got in the past a, a variance for a three-story three building. I'm just asking, I guess, a variance for the other three-story building now. Okay. If that makes sense. Kathy, anything the, the administration can offer? I. I no, not with regard to the conditional use permit. No. Okay. So, commissioners, do you have any questions for the applicant? I just have a question to the city. If we approve the conditional use permit, it, does that have any bearing on the issue about a three-story building? Or, that's not part of that approval, right? No, that will be separate. Right. That's yes. what I thought. Okay, thank you. Okay. I'll entertain a motion for approval. Anybody at all? <laughs> Motion to approve. Uh, no conditions for the CUP. I'll second. I'm going to put yeah. that back in. Yeah. That applies. It, they're, they're, they are dis discrete CUPs. And the, the issue isn't this applicant. The issue is they so get bought out by someone or they sell the project to someone else. We, we want to make sure the record is extremely clear what makes these um, conditionally used. So, conditional Gary, Gary that's okay, right? One condition, community. Community amenities. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. So all, all of these get incorporated uh, into a, into a right. We can attach this to the CUP. Okay. Thank you, sir. Entertain a motion for approval. Motion to approve with one condition. Second. 
Be ready. Mr. Tiedemann. Yes. Mr. Varga. Yes. Mr. Cicero. Yes. Mr. Cook. Yes. Mr. Perkovich. Yes. And Mr. Snow. Yes. Okay. Under old business, miscellaneous review of amendments to the Manor Code of Ordinances, Chapter 1137, amendments by the City of Manor. We're going to deal with that tonight, so we're going to take it off the table. I'll entertain a motion. Take it off the table. Yes. Second. You ready? Uh, Mr. Tiedemann. Yes. Mr. Varga. Yes. Mr. Cicero. Yes. Mr. Cook. Yes. Mr. Perkovich. Yes. Mr. Snow. Yes. Anything, Joe, you'd like to add? Unless there's that? some points of clarification, I'd, be, I'd do my best to answer them. Okay. Anybody have any questions on this? Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion. Motion to approve. Second. Uh, Mr. Tiedemann. Yes. Mr. Varga. No. Mr. Cicero. No. Mr. Cook. Yes. Mr. Perkovich. No. Mr. Snow. Yes. What's the three to three? Three to three. Thank you. So, under new business, preliminary site plan of an office building at 8160 Norton Parkway. It's that applicant here. Can you come and identify yourself for the clerk, please, and tell us what you want to do at that location. Good evening. My name is Tom Dieterle. I'm with AODK Architects. Um, the preliminary uh, site development plan that was submitted for a three-story office um, along Norton Parkway. Um, the building is about uh, 10,000 square foot of floor. It's three floors. Um, the building um, faces uh, Norton Parkway. Um, there is a shared uh, easement, uh, a new road coming in off Norton Parkway. Uh, that will provide access to the building site. Uh, the site, uh, the parking on site uh, is around the building. There's a uh, pedestrian path around the building, uh, and there's landscaping leading to the building. And there's a, a front entrance for the public, and then a rear entrance facing south for the staff. Can, can, you, can you repeat your name, please? Yeah, my name's Tom Dieterle. Commissioners, yep. any questions for the applicant? Any questions for the administration? What? Some questions. Go ahead. I like the building. Thank you very much. Uh, in the, the, the document that you gave us showed that the back portion of the site is wooded. It's no longer wooded. <laughs> that's, that's correct. At, at this juncture, the, the site's been, been cleared. Yes, yes, sir. Uh, I noticed on the, I guess it would be the south portion of the property is undeveloped. Is is there future use for that current, piece of property? Or curr not? Currently not. It'll, it'll be a landscape buffer. Uh, one of the things that I would like to see is a, to have that space landscape you know, with a, you know, rigorous landscaping plan to, to try to... Uh, Act as a buffer, and uh, so that it's not just a, a vacant piece of land. I'd make that a condition. Okay. Is that okay with you? Can you just clarify where you were speaking of the rear? The, yeah, yes, okay. in the orientation, it's the, mm. the the southern portion of the site. Okay. Uh, you can't. Re it's all this down here. Yeah. Where there's no development that used to be wooded, if it was still wooded, I would say leave the, the trees there so that you'd have a natural environment, that those trees are gone. So let's include th that into a landscaping plan so that it's not just a vacant lot. I think um, it's, it's something, you know, I'm always conscious of budget. I understand your common concern. I'd like to take a look at, look at it within the context of the budget and come up with, with a strategy to... To meet, meet the request. So, could we, asking the city, so we could approve this except for the landscaping plan? Well, the landscaping, this is preliminary anyway, oh, this so is preliminary. we're going to come back okay, for a final. Right. So, we want to see a developed landscaping plan. Uh, Mr. Chairman? Yes. Uh, it, it's probably premature to make any public announcements, but there certainly are, you know, plans on the drawing board, so to speak, um, for these adjacent, these adjacent lands. Uh, before they come back to final with something that, that may not be in concert with how the remaining portions may be developed. Is there any 
feedback? Is, is the commission looking for lawn or is it looking for mounding or is there just trying to get a better feel for what would be required for final? Well, yeah, well, this property is their property, so it won't, there, there is no future development of this property. I'm no, sure. but immediately adjacent to it, I, I would the expectation say just, is. Just to create more of a natural environment rather than just a lawn or an empty space. Just as to incorporate, just as we asked for the building to be have, uh, you know, uh, foundation plannings, and we have some trees in the corners and along the, you know, we, we have some requirements to, to do something with that other than just leave it as a, a vacant land. Maybe some Cleveland select trees, or thunder clouds, or whatever, whatever uh, they want to do. Yeah, just have, just include it in the des overall design of the site. Is that a condition? That's a condition. Okay. Anything else you'd like to offer? This is preliminary, so we even yeah. we even vote. So I'll entertain a motion. I'll make a motion with the eight conditions, but I guess we're enhancing the second condition, asking for landscaping along the back of the uh, the building. It just say landscaping the entire site. The entire works. site design. A second. Second. <clears throat> Mr. Tiedemann. Yes. Mr. Varga. Yes. Mr. Cicero. Yes. Mr. Cook. Yes. Mr. Perkovich. Yes. And mm. Mr. Snow. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Final site plan and architectural review of manufacturing building at 8990 Tyler Boulevard. Is that applicant there? Yes, sir. Go ahead. Uh, good evening. Rich Cantanzariti with Land Design Consultants. I'm here with uh, Fahim Jamail from Lakeland Construction Group. And uh, we're here to uh, submit for the final site plan architectural review for uh, Freedom Corporation Building and Parking Lot Edition at 8990 Tyler Boulevard. Uh, read through the staff comments. Um, we will be able to address all of those in a timely fashion to go on to the next, uh, you know, build, building permit. Uh, but in the meantime, today we did submit, it, just just recently this week, we were able to uh, get a hold of ODNR regarding the gas well that's on the site. Uh, we had a slight building change. We notched out the southeast corner of the building that you see on the screen. To maintain a 100-foot radius around the gas well. And that's really the only reason for the uh, updated plans that you see on the board there. Uh, the, the, you know, it's, an, it's, it's a proposed addition to an existing site, so we're just going to keep the same color material, yep. everything else. So we'll, we'll entertain any questions you, the commission may have. Okay. Kathy, anything that you'd like to ask? No, just with regard to this particular item, um, we've had a, a number of conversations with the applicant, also with the fire department. Uh, just to kind of give you a little history, um, the Planning Commission actually issued the original CUP for the gas well on the site when the gas well regulations were still in effect with the city. Um, so uh, at that time, there were some distance requirements. Those have since um, been taken over by the ODNR. Right. And because of that, um, I know the uh, fire department advised them to uh, speak with ODNR, and that was the recommendation was the 100-foot distance. So that's why you're seeing the change tonight. It was in response to the condition. Um, otherwise, so the building is slightly smaller than originally uh, submitted. It was originally submitted at, at 40,000 square feet. Now it's at 37,637 square feet just because of that change. So We have the uh, building material samples. I do. Uh, good evening, everybody. I'm Fahim Jamail, president and owner of Lakeland Construction Group. We are the designer and contractors for the project for the Mr. Suster uh, family. Uh, I'm not sure uh, anybody from Freedom Corporation is here, but basically we're adding uh, to existing. We're matching the same color as, uh, as the, the masonry, the same color as the metal sidings. Uh, we're not changing anything flat roof. Uh, existing so uh, it's a very exciting time for uh, Freedom Corporation to expand and they're excited and looking forward to uh, make it part of their uh, 
over all the facility. Okay. Any questions for the applicant commissioners? So we're going to identify the building materials for the city. Questions? For the record, no questions. Just state. Walnut color scan, interstate brick, L4, walnut L 4. So, I'll entertain a motion. Motion to approve with the five conditions. Second. What? As amended. As amended. As amended. Second. Mr. Tiedemann. Yes. Mr. Varga. Yes. Mr. Cicero. Yes. Mr. Cook. Yes. Mr. Perkovich. Yes. And Mr. Snow. Yes. Final site plan and architecture review of a get go convenience store and gas station at 6800 Center Street. Is that applicant here? Hello, my name is Brian Wellert. I'm with uh, Wellert Corporation, which is the civil engineering consultant on this project. In reviewing the, um, in reviewing the uh, staff report and the initial conditions. All of the conditions are agreeable. The only, um, I spoke with um, someone in the engineering department regarding the traffic flow. The bollards will be ASTM uh, standards. The only one we have any issue with would be proposed condition number two. And I believe that's more of a point of confusion on our part. Uh, I'd like to clarify with the uh, commission. Our initial reasoning or justification for coming up with the number of parking spots is based on the building being mixed use as both a fast food and a convenience store. Uh, we went through a couple attempts trying to split the floor plan between the two uses and it really works out to almost 50%. Um, I did bring these copies of the floor plans using the chart, according to your uh, code. Thank you. Thank you. You can see there's just a quick hatched floor plan in the background. And I just did that to make it a little more visible. This is just kind of a outline of what I saw that would be deemed as part of the fast food part of the building and that would be in blue the red would be considered the convenience store um, and it works out pretty close to 50 percent it's not really you know I didn't take time to split all the bathrooms down the middle I don't know how we'd split those between the two uses or some of the coolers and freezers so with this idea According to the code, which is on the front page, you can see how we came up with the 41 parking spots. We're matching the code for the square footage required for the fast food restaurant, as well as the square footage for the convenience store by splitting the building in half. Now that gives us a minimum required by code of 41 and a maximum of 46, and our site plan shows 41 spots. Kathy, any comments from this administration on that? I mean, if the, if the Planning Commission is comfortable with that, ad, those additional spaces based on his justification, we have no objection. Any okay. questions for the applicant? I have a few questions. Mm -hmm. uh, it has to do with um, traffic flow. Um, Though I understand the plan, I understand the, the, the initial reasoning for this. I still have, uh, I personally have some issue with 
the right in off of 615 going south and then the also the right in coming in off the driveway not uh, the the access driveway uh, now i understand that's to help with the fueling t uh, trucks coming in correct so it's easier for them to do that correct uh, my concern is and you know it, is that though I understand those are both ent entrances for everyone to come in, the only exit from the site for get for fueling is is on the west side of the site, heading right into the right where the uh, opposite the um, food store. Correct. I'm just afraid that people are going to go out the entrances. That when they pull in, say someone pulls in off of uh, uh, 615 going south. They pull in. They pull into the the fueling docks going south. Aim, you know, their car is pointing south. Then they're going to want to leave. They're going to look around, and everything around them, the, the entrance is the exit is behind them, and at the uh, you know at the other end of the site, that they're going to try to get out that driveway, the one going to the to the uh, to the entrance drive, or God forbid. They'll try to go out the way they came in, right? And uh, we can put signs up. We can put what you know, we refer to as the porch up. You know, the the curb, the concrete mound. But I've seen other examples. And again, I'm just speaking from my own observations, where people just will go where they want to go, and if we give them the opportunity to drive out in the, into 615, they'll do it. And, I, and I'm not sure I know how to stop them from doing it. So I can understand the entrance coming in off the driveway. Is there any way we can live without the, the, the uh, drive coming in off of 615? I believe that drive is currently installed. That curb cut was put in place in the beginning of the entrance was placed when they did this initial development. So we're just connecting to the drive at the right way for this driveway. Uh, the turn line was installed as part of that project. It's there's an existing building there. They, they, they haven't demolished the old building. It's Hertz, isn't it? Yeah, Hertz, Hertz is there. But the curb cut. Is well, I guess that still doesn't, uh, you know, it doesn't address my concern, and that is that people will still drive out that way into oncoming traffic. And I'm I'm just sensitive to that, and I, and I I leave it open for some of my fellow commissioners to to comment on. So, so you put that curb cut in. I mean, there's a building there now. I don't, I don't quite understand that. No. Right. I see it right there. It's in the front of the the Hertz building. Uh -huh. Yeah, this situation is somewhat unique in that the overall development was built. And <clears throat> we are matching on all four sides to what was developed. Um, in fact, our plans. We have a existing or what was there at the time of the survey, and we'll also be including the development plans of what will be there June 1st it is promised to be installed. That curb cut and entrance was, we didn't design the entrance, we're just mating up to the entrance that was previously. So even when Hertz was operating, they operated out of a new <coughs> entrance that was put in. Well, I guess I, I, that's interesting. I, that doesn't really, address my concern about safety, which is... Um, yeah, we angled, so we did take that into consideration. You can see we angled that driveway quite a bit to make I, it... I that, understand. Yeah. I do, I do, I mean, I... And put in our... I will, I, I'm signs. telling you, I, I know people will drive out that way. Oh. I, okay, and and if it's not there, they won't. That's my, my point. If that driveway's not there, then no one will drive back into the oncoming traffic or try to get to the freeway because that's the shortest distance, you know, to shoot across and get to the other side. Uh, that's just my point of view. Uh, I have no other comments about the, the overall plan other than I think there was some discussion in the analysis about being able to, I mean, around the fuel islands, there's no real direction as to where to go and how to get from one place to another. It's kind of a free-for-all zone. And that, that's also my concern is that because when they're sitting there, they're looking, and the only entrance they can see is the one coming in off the driveway. And that, and I that, will say, oh, I apologize. No, no, go ahead. Go ahead. Um, as far as traffic around a canopy on a fueling station, um, nationally we work with several large uh, fueling companies. 
Gecko, Circle K, Travel Centers, mm-hmm. WeWork National for all these companies. All of them have determined to reduce traffic markings around a canopy because it has resulted in less accidents. When we've installed, this as you can see to the drive lanes, we've installed traffic arrows around the outside. But near the canopy, we found statistically that when people are directed to a location, they don't look each direction and they tend to pull right into oncoming traffic. And cars, since they're going each direction, since they fuel on each side of the canopy, by increasing markings, we had more traffic. It's become almost a universal in the industry for immediately adjacent to the community. I'm with you. Okay. Yeah. Statistics are statistics. I, I, I accept that. So how do people know where to exit this area? I mean, in most cases, if you pull into a gas station, you pull into a fueling area, you come in off the street, you fuel, you turn around, and you go out to where you came in. Or you go out and you go to the side and you go out. It's it's obvious where the exits are. In this situation, when someone pulls in, especially off of 615, they're facing the south. How do they know where to exit? I will say the drive to the south of the site, the one connecting to the access drive, that was specifically designed to make it very complicated for a car to get into. But it's always you, possible. You know, yeah. And it's not even a, a main street, so people will say, oh, I, I can just... I can drive out and cut it, get get into the, the the right turning lane, you know. It's always a possibility. Um, just as if it was a two-way drive, there's a possibility that people who pull down the middle of a two-way drive, we run into that, they go crosswise across. We did what we could for the drive to the south. Um, the drive on the east, we did put stop bars in, so hopefully even if somebody does try to exit through there, um, there's enough notification for people coming in and exiting the site that it's not a high-speed entrance at all. Um, there's do not enter signs and stop bars in that location. But even people come in southbound on center and they see that light ahead and it's red and cars are backed up, they're going to want to cut through here to go drive right through here to get into mm-hmm. the parking lot of Giant Eagle so not only is it the problem that Mr. Vargas speaks about, you're going to have people that know this site enough, they're going to use that as a shortcut to avoid the light to get in. So I'm on board with just, just getting rid of this, even if you have to just install a new curb or leave the curb cut and just close it off because there's no apron there. It's not like you got to rip an apron out. It's just walk, right? I just want to, we would have to indi- uh, review the past approval uh, that was originally put in place with the overall development plan because with that curb cut in now, I don't know that we can re- remove it. It might have been part of the original agreement. So that would be something we would have to just verify. The agreement verify. with the whole site. Yes. So if we can't remove it, can we exaggerate that angle more to make it even harder to uh, come left out of there? I mean, it's exaggerated, but maybe you can even exaggerate the angle more. Or just leave it as a curb cut and just close it off with landscaping. If we did remove that drive, that site would have no access to a street. We would be coming off that access drive into Giant Eagle. But isn't the access drive for the site? The, the The other fast food restaurants also do not have direct access from a main road. It's all from internal access, including including the supermarket. It's kind of like you go into the site right. and use the road within the site to... Well, maybe we recommend that they work with the engineering department, to, well, for, for two reasons, obviously, to verify again that this is something that can't be changed or can be changed, and if it can't, then work with the engineering department what would be acceptable in terms of increasing the curve of it mm-hmm. and so forth so that everyone's more comfortable. I mean, that was one of our conditions anyway, was that we wanted to get um, a better, uh, well, that's item number six, clarification of the traffic flow. Mm-hmm. We had the same concern, so. I did speak with Alan Pennington at the engineering office in regards to the traffic flow. Um, he was on board with the drives and the signage on site. 
his biggest concern was to maintain that the signs were shown at seven feet. <coughs> um, there was some discussion about sign height. And that comment he said to me was the standard comment they placed in regards <laughs> to any traffic devices. So, but I did call him directly to speak with him um, to make sure I was on board with whatever the city was looking for in regards to traffic flow on site. Can I ask you, City, the, when we talk about signage, we would have signs on both sides of these driveways, large, saying, do not exit. Yeah, and they, and ex they are noted there on the site plan. They're, they're both shown there as do not enter signs. And I'm even talking about maybe larger than standard or, you know. Um, I have no problems with the whole thing, except for that I don't want to drive by there in a year and see somebody you know, T-boned in, in the middle of the street there from people coming out. It, to me, it's a safety issue. That's all. It's just safety. If we could go back to the to the photo, I think Larry brought up a good point. There's a median in the in the 615 there. So at least from the standpoint of, of folks trying to cross over to head northbound, I don't, that's not going to happen. Yeah, but they'd go southbound. They'll jump. They'll jump the. They'll jump the corner and go. If south. the if the curve is is designed right, it's going to make it very uh, challenging okay. to do that. I've I've done. I've said everything I can say. I, I'm still concerned about the safety of those that driveway. In, even the other one that people will drive out the shortest distance to get to the street. And those two driveways are the shortest distance to get to the street. Yeah, I actually like that you can come in off of 615 heading south. <laughs> but no, I, I, I no, hear what you're saying. I just, I'm just, and, and I do get concerned about people coming out of there and trying to I know what people exit do. out of that. So whatever we can do on that design to exaggerate it, put landscaping, something to stop the right or left turn out of there would be great. But I just think from an access coming off the highway... Well, I, I, it's, 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 ideal. it's not that I don't understand. <laughs> yeah. I also watch the way people drive. Yeah, no, yeah. Give them an opportunity, they will take it. So what do you want to do? Um, can we make a condition of enhanced signing, signage? I mean, more than, more than the, the minimum or more than the standard enhanced signs that say do not and both sides of these drives coming in do not exit not an exit whatever the city deems the appropriate language but enhanced signing signage the um do not enter signs are per uh, dot requirement sign sign size and type would be per their requirement um we could add additional pavement marking well, the signs, this isn't an ODOT. I mean, I understand that everyone alludes to the ODOT signage. Can we get bigger signs than the ODOT standard? That's what I'm kind of alluding to. ODOT doesn't have... They, no, they don't. They, they it's don't, just an accepted level no, of safety standard. Right, and so. I'm suggesting maybe a, a, an enhanced level of safety standard. Larger than ODOT standard signs. I'm looking to the city for a reaction to that. Is that a reasonable thing to ask for? If that's what the commission would like. I know, and there's been other items that have been mentioned. I don't know if you want to include anything else. Yeah, I just wanted to include to, um, and I guess I don't know how exactly to put it, but just to enhance the angle of that entrance and possibly enhance landscaping to prevent left turns or right turns out of there or any exit. Well, that's what you do for a living, right? So we'll leave it uh, for you to come up with an alternative solution. Um, I can look into what we have for signage. We do have, also along that entrance, there is quite a bit of landscaping. The ID sign, um, as she has pulled up, is located there at the entrance, too. Mm -hmm. um, so, to Ew. obviously, we cannot stop everyone. To exit out that lane, there'll be very low visibility for somebody to even see that if you look at the angle if they're coming out um, they will be turning against the natural flow of traffic around that site hopefully the way it's landscape landscaped as well it'll limit visibility looking at that um, there will be a tree at the one corner and you can 
the landscaping following that arc heading into the drive. I, I understand. If someone comes off the freeway, they come th in there to get gas, they want to go back to the freeway, there's an urge to go back to where they came because they want to go north. And and there's an island. I know there's all... I, just people will do almost any anything to get yeah. to cut the corner. I actually think they'll try to use that truck entrance more, which I don't think you can do anything about. Um, that one is purposely like, designed as well. And it looks I, like you've designed it to make it difficult to get out there. Right. It reaches and angles past the end of the canopy. Um, the intent is that people will try to leave at the access drive to the south. People look for a traffic light. I'm, I'm what's, the what's the pleasure of the commission? I'm, I'm still suggesting that a condition that says that this exit signage, the prohibitive exit signage, um, is larger than standard ODOT signage. No, I'm okay with that. That's a condition. So that would be what, a tenth condition? Yeah, that would be ten. A motion? That's a motion to approve with 10 conditions. Second. Mr. Tiedemann? Yes. Mr. Varga? Yes. Mr. Cicero? Yes. Mr. Cook? Yes. Mr. Perkovich? Yes. Mr. Snow? Yes. Miscellaneous <coughs> review of Thank an you. amendment to a development plan at Minter Hills Drive. Number seven. Did I? We have his number seven, which is that's the safety center. That's the safety center. Two weeks in a row, I did that. Yeah. Good evening. My name is Andy Tarowski. I'm an architect with CT Consultants, and we're here to talk about the regional response facility on um, 615, or I'm sorry, uh, Reynolds Road. Um, the, uh, there is an existing fire station on Reynolds Road, and we are going to be putting a, would like to put a 13,000 square foot L-shaped building uh, behind that structure. Go back there. That's the existing fire station. So currently, uh, what we're going to be doing is we actually obtained additional land to the south, and we're going to be getting rid of the existing single drive that's there and locating um, a double, double entrance and egress uh, drive immediately adjacent <coughs> to the, the new property line. Um, it was tight before with the single, and now I think it's going to be much more wide open to access that rear of the structure and, and make that big U-turn. Um, the facility itself is a, um, let's say, it's more like a storage building plus a training center. So the two legs themselves will be actually the apparatus bays where all the trucks and, and trailers will be parked. And the, where the two legs intersect is the administration portion where there's going to be a training center in the back for uh, training by the, the safety forces that are there. It'll also be sort of like a control area where if there is a, a, an event, um, that requires everybody to come to this site, they can, they can utilize that space for the control area. The, the space immediately to the south, um, there's actually 12 bays that are allotted for the fire department, and the additional bay to the south is allotted to the airport just in case they need something to store um, for their convenience there. It also helps with a little bit of you know, satisfying what they need and helping us with, with what we need. Um, the building itself is about 26 feet at its peak. Uh, again, it's, it's, it's a pretty utilitarian structure. Um, there's not a lot of fanciness to it. Uh, we see the overhead doors. Um, at the request of, of safety forces, we didn't put any doors, I'm sorry, any windows in the doors, so that's why it looks pretty stark. Uh, but 
with the, the separate colors, we got a base that is a darker, and then uh, the upper half of it is lighter, so it's sort of reminiscent of the existing structure that is in front. And then we've got um, a shingle, the dimensional shingle roof, uh, gable roof um, at the top. Um, the colors of the building, the base is a walnut by interstate brick. The upper <coughs> is cedar, by, also by interstate brick. The shingles are... The shingles are driftwood by Landmark Design. That color right there. Actually, not driftwood. Driftwood is right there. It's a little darker, more on the, the blackish gray side. And then the coping at the top of the, the gables would be an etched bronze. All the doors, including the man doors, would match the uh, overhead door, so they're looking at a, at a gray finish to them. They'll be anodized aluminum for the coiling doors, and then the man doors are uh, hollow metal doors, and they'll be painted to match that color. Questions? Any questions for the applicant? Any comments from the administration? No, out of the, other than the four conditions noted. Okay, couple questions. Go ahead. Uh, the building in front has some, some very small roof overhangs at the edges of the building. Is the new building going to have that too? I noticed, I noticed you have a, a, a partial east elevation at entry, sec and there's a section. It shows a little roof overhang. Yeah. Do we have the elevations? But the elevations um, are kind of cropped so that it does, you don't see an overhang. But I'm thinking that's... There is an I overhang. I just want to verify. It, it, matches, it matches the 8-inch. If you can see the, the retaining walls, not retaining walls, but the walls that separate the structure, they actually protrude through the roof and mm -hmm. extend out away from that. So the overhangs themselves will actually meet. It's about 8 inches. Meet that okay, protrusion. Right. And I only have one other question. And, and the office area or the assembly area... Administrative area in the corner. What's the capacity? What's the number of people that? Have? Twenty-eight to thirty people. Okay, because you only really have one exit coming out of that area. You can't really exit into the the, the vehicle storage areas. So I'm just wanting to. I think under fifty people, you can have one exit. That's correct. So I just want to verify that that population was under fifty. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Anything else? Kathy, anything from the city? Uh, no, nothing other than what's noted in the report. Okay. Chief, anything you would like to add? Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the commission. I just want to thank you for your time and consideration reviewing this. I think that it's um, been a long time in planning. Uh, operationally, it's going to meet our needs, and, and there is a definitive need to have this facility. So thank you. Very good. Mm -hmm. I'll entertain a motion. Motion to approve with the four conditions. <laughs> Second. Mr. Tiedemann. Yes. Mr. Varga. Yes. Mr. Cicero. Yes. Mr. Cook. Yes. Mr. Perkovich. Yes. Mr. Snow. Yes. Thank, Thank you very much. Miscellaneous review of an amendment to a development plan, parking lot restriping at 7200 Center Street. Joe Myers, the architect for the project. Uh, did the re imaging at uh, last month's meeting. Uh, we came up with a, d a different site plan that offered more protection for the front entrance that's being added to the front of the building. Um, we've read through the staff report. I guess I have two comments that. Uh, you requested protective bollards around the front, and if we could just say protective features around the front, they'd like to rather use like a concrete planter or some type of a feature other than a bollard uh, kind of sitting out in front of the building to, to offer protection from overhanging the sidewalk curb that wraps around the front of the building. And the, oh, they will add signage to the site. The uh, the report talks about adding handicap signage, and if it's 
across the parking spaces behind the building. That's that's fine. That's what their parking uh, handicap parking spaces are behind the building now. This new front entrance actually opens a door and goes up a flight of stairs to get to the second floor. So it would not be a good spot to put a handicap parking space, uh, to, you know, to to make it through to the front entrance. Um, they will remove the the spotlight from the side of the building. That that's they don't have an issue with that, and they will repaint the pavement and uh, the right turn only coming out of the, the front of the parking lot. Okay, any questions? To, to respond to your request of not using a bollard but using something else, um, I guess whatever you else, and we'll just discuss this for a minute, anything else you would use would have to be uh, sturdy enough to deal with an impact from an automobile. It would also have to be some distance away from the face of the building so that if a person is in that proximity they can get between whatever this is a bollard or a planter and the, the face of the building so they don't get caught there you know it's not just to protect the building it's to also allow someone not to be caught between this planter and the building if the you know a truck is going to hit it or a car is going to hit it so typically the bollards are far enough away that a person could get by and not get caught in between the bollard and the car. So if you're going to put a planner out there, and again, this is just discussion right now, you still need room for people to get around behind it so they don't get caught, trapped by this device to protect the building. It's to protect pe pedestrians too. Right? You, you understand what I'm saying? I believe so. So do you, to allow access across the front, I mean, we have a door on each side, so the idea is that well, you would enter from Wherever either you put side. a bollard, wherever you typically, and, and the city can jump in, if, wherever you put a bollard to protect like a corner of a building, there's enough space for a person to be able to not, you know, to be able to get okay. behind it so they don't get caught by the bollard in okay. a situation. So if you're going to put something else there other than a bollard, it needs to have a, enough room, 20 inches, 20, whatever it is, Eight, you know, so a person can get behind, get away from being behind it and not get caught by this against the building. Okay. So that's, you know, I, I mean, I guess the city have a problem with if they have a planner or something that's sturdy enough to protect? Or do we only do this with steel bollards? I think, I want to know, one of, the, one of the examples that I've always been told about is, is what's actually across the street, um, the one... Um, Strip center that has um, their planters. Uh, they're not exactly um, I, desirable from that standpoint. Uh, that's exactly what we're talking about. Uh, oh well, we, those were done for. That wasn't to protect from automobiles. That was protect. That was a. He didn't want somebody driving a truck into a front of his store. Nobody no, else has those in front of theirs. But I know. But the design of them was not. Wasn't that was not the best Favored. solution? Yes, right. I agree. So I guess it depends on what it is you're proposing. What what is it that you're what what do you think you're going to do? Um, a concrete <laughs> planter, or is it uh, some sort of a, a sculpture? He said. Well, that's I mean, we can anchor it to the ground, and yeah, I mean it. The, it'll be up to the administration whether we come up with something that would be. It just sounds a little indefinite as to what that is. I mean. Sure. It, it needs to be attractive to the building. You, yeah. It's a nice building that you're putting up. I mean, it should, yeah, if it's something, stru if some structure, it should. We've like, done it with concrete planters before. I, I guess. That we can anchor those, know, you know, with the uh, rebar into the, into the sidewalk mm -hmm. so that it can't move. You said mm -hmm. sculpture. What kind of sculpture? Yeah. I guess we have to see it. Yeah? Okay. okay. I guess, yeah, I guess we need to see that because I'm going to. Yeah. And I only have one other condition that I thought I'd add, and that is that the part of the parking that's going to be abandoned, that you don't need all that, that, that you remove the asphalt and include some additional landscaping in that space, which is to the, it's to the north of the end of the new parking area. Where you have that, I think there's some more parking or some asphalt out there. I don't know. I, okay. I mean, I, that's there's my... There's like a little semicircle. Well, just yes. to get rid of whatever is not part of the, the design yeah. and any land that it becomes free then to landscape that. And it, yeah, hopefully you saw the landscape plan. They planned quite a bit even around the retention area and grasses that will work within the retention area. 
Oh yeah, okay. As a landscape I can see architect. It. Yes. So the landscaping is fine. You, the lands. Uh, yeah. Okay. Well, let's let's just forget that. Then we don't need another amendment because you're you're showing that yeah, with the that. intention is to screen that whole retention and you have, area and you with have the landscaping. The area that would be additional where the unused land, uh, asphalt you can show it as lawn. Yes. So that's fine. That, uh, no additional condition. Okay. Well, how we how do we get him to just come back and show us this detail? <laughs> Director's report. I, I was just saying a protective feature. Yeah, I mean, if it's going to be a bollard, they'll, they'll do a bollard. Do we get to see this, or Chairman. is it strictly administrative? Mr. Chairman. Go ahead. Uh, Mr. Snow has previously in, in commission meetings mentioned some of the um, you know very significant concrete planters you'll see, say, in downtown Cleveland, which which serve this function. I don't know if that provides a frame of reference uh, uh, that the chairman has, you know, previously advanced. I, I think that's a good idea. I'm not, I'm not saying that that's what should be. Obviously, I'm just saying that that was, I think, previously discussed at some meetings as, as a type well, of protective planter. The, the idea is acceptable. It's just that I don't, I don't know. It's not actually that. a proposal in front of us unless we say something that is commercial, com commercial, uh, commercially available decorative planner that can be anchored and uh, to protect the corners of the building, I guess, is what we're talking about. Short of having the applicant come back, I think Mr. Zeman just indicated maybe we would do it as part of a director's report. If you had some sort of that's, that's objection fine. to it, then... Yeah. No, that's I don't have a problem with that. That's and that's, I guess I was saying, protective feature it would be pro whatever, it would have to be judged to be protective. Okay. And a concrete planner is, I think, what they have in mind. So, so what do we want to do there? Um, so we have to modify uh, condition two. <clears throat> Say protective bollards are decorative concrete. <laughs> <laughs> or equivalent. Or other protective. Or equivalent. Or equivalent, equivalent decorative feature. Or equivalent feature. Decor decorative feature. That works. So I'll make a motion with those four conditions. Second. Mr. Tiedemann. Yes. Mr. Varga. Yes. Mr. Cicero. Yes. Mr. Cook. Yes. Mr. Per Perkovich. Yes. Mr. Snow. Yes. Thank you. Thanks, Joe. So now you should review an amendment to a development plan at Bender Hills Drive, number nine. Do you want to do here? So we're actually looking at the. Oh, we're looking. This is the villas. Oh. This is the review of an amendment. Okay. Okay. Give us a little overview of what we want to do there, or what you want to do there. Well, again, um, I want to build Gary Bialis with Omni Senior Living. Um, our plan is to construct these villas as part, as part of our overall community. Uh, our plan is not to construct these all at one time. Just so you know, they'll be in phases. It could be anywhere from 10 to 12 units at a time. Um, and part of this uh, complex or community would be a clubhouse that would service these um, units, but they would also have the ability to use the building if they would want. Uh, as I mentioned before, most people would just want to probably stay here and live in this environment. Um, there is there, there one bedroom unit, one, there are two bedroom units, one or two car garages, anywhere from uh, 1,300 feet to about 1,500 square feet. Um, I know I've in the package, and I'm not sure if you received anything. I showed the exteriors of them, as well as the um, interiors of the buildings. So right now we're we're dealing with just the amendment to the previously approved plan. 
not the approval of the units. Right. So I don't know what else. I mean, the proof. Right. Yeah. Well, I have a question to the city. Knowing this is all private, private drive, private uh, land, if this was a subdivision for the city, we, would, we wouldn't we would approve this because of the one entrance right. uh, condition. There was. I, I've, I had a call with the fire department last week. Yeah. There, they had a couple comments. They want to know on the sprinkler system in our main complex, which we have fully sprinkled, and a second entrance into this. So we will have a second entrance. Where, where would the second entrance come from? Well, um, Garfield. Off of Har well, we have two choices. Right, is for that. It possible along there, easement um, along this property he's showing that will come up there and then go straight in there. That's one. The other option, we are talking to an um, adjoining property owner who's very supportive of our project, and we may actually go through his project. Uh, not there, it go to the right. There's a road that comes down in the back of his property, right, of an aerial or not. So we would have a second access point yes. per the what, fire department's request. Uh, so, so in order to review the the alterations of the approved plan, we need to see this <laughs> secondary road. I mean, uh, right? Well, our approved plan, we never had a plan for this, so I guess you're looking at the plan that was approved years ago, right? You'd have to come on. No, the, this plan, this plan right here. This is the first submittal of this plan, correct? Right. That if you're suggesting that this is not what would be the current plan, we should need to see the second, the plan with the second entrance. Right. Well, the fire department called me the last... Uh, I mean, after this was submitted. So right now, this is just though the review of the, of the of the change of the development plan from what was originally approved years ago. No, I understand. And then the site plan. Okay, so review, we. We'll this is what, okay, so we'll wait to get the bite at that apple, at the next at the next level, right? Right. But yeah, knowing that this is still preliminary and so, they have so to come back and find. So this is a concept. It. We're just looking at this as a concept change to the previous approved plan. Right. All right, that's fine. Then <coughs> postpone the okay. to the next one, next discussion. Is that a motion? Uh, unless somebody has an issue with th this as an alternate or a new development plan, I'd, I'd say we accept this with. I didn't see how many conditions. Well, so it, there's there, really no condition. Is there any conditions? Is there a motion that it's in substantial agreement to? 1994 plan? Yeah. Okay, that's the motion. Okay. And I'll second that. Mr. Tiedemann? Yes. Mr. Varga? Yes. Mr. Cicero? Yes. Mr. Cook? Yes. Mr. Perkovich? Yes. Mr. Snow? Yes. Now. Now. <laughs> now you're right. <laughs> <laughs> so my, my, you know, my comment from two minutes ago, <laughs> is that in order for us to approve this site plan, or as a preliminary, uh, look at it as in a preliminary site plan, we'd need to see the second entrance because that's conceptually different than what we're looking at right now. Well, I'd ask that it, uh, on a final site plan, it could show it. I mean, I, I, I just learned about this, I don't know, last Friday, okay? Um, when the fire department called. That's, that's true, but I would have had this problem anyhow. Right. I mean, I, I would No, have, no, I know. Yeah. We should have made this a condition, which I think we can still add this as a condition that the fire department is requiring a second means of access to be provided on the final development plan for review. And that can still be made part of that, of your approval. It, it does accept your idea of sharing the road from your neighbor. Right. And we have a that, yeah. that would change your development plan. At least the way I look at this, that road would come right in through. 34, 35, and 36. You could, it could, I could. So it would cha substantially change your plan. Well, I could lose, I possibly could lose one villa. If, if I can't move the villas far enough. Mm -hmm. And this would only be for fire access, too. It would not be for right. all access. Just I'm just saying, know. what effect would That's it have on the plan? If, if I can't okay. move the buildings far enough apart, then I could lose a villa. Yes, okay. I realize that. Right, so we're, we're, we're talking about this concept of it being emergency vehicles only. We have Chief Searles in the audience. It would be great I, to I have him I see him, there. yes. And before he gets to the... Uh, my concern... Oh, you, you can hit for the microphone. 
my concern is it's not just like fire vehicles. This population probably is going to have a higher instant use of emergency vehicles. And I have two issues. One is the need for the second entrance. I have another issue that we'll bring up in a little bit. But, but I'm concerned that they can get in here and, and a, a, large, a greater frequency than the normal subdivision and that whatever the agreement is that they that the fire fire marshal is happy with this happy not just you know minimum standard like the commission we share the same concern and um, as we did a review of this site um, as, as a preliminary review there were a couple additional safety concerns that we had and um, we had a phone conversation uh, conference call with the applicant and as you noted, uh, Mr. Varga, this is a private um, development here, but I think the response needs to remain the same, and their number of units is beyond what we consider reasonable for one access. So in that conversation, we talked about the need for secondary access, which they were agreeable to. We were looking at that site plan, preliminary site plan, having the discussion. Kathy is right. We should have included that as a condition. But it, it wasn't done at that time because we were in discussion with the applicant there. They've also agreed to some other safety features in, in their other facility that uh, I think uh, aren't required by code, but uh, we're concerned with ours too. So they were very cooperative with that. But um, thank you for sharing that concern. It is a concern of ours. And um, from my point of view, we'll move to the second access point. Okay. Well, as I've stated, another, if it's acceptable to you, it's acceptable to me from a safety point of view. I was, it was my thought that I said to add it as a emergency access only. If that's not desired, we can make it as regular access, but I just They're thought all I, private drives. Yeah. Right. Is that a motion? No, no, I have something else I want to discuss. As, as a general plan, and this is a different subject, so let me just, you have a, uh, Grading, uh, partial grading plan, in, it's broken up into two sections. If you just look at the lower se or the lower section of the southern section, um, I, I don't know if you can find that. It shows some preliminary uh, topography, at least for the roads. Uh, there's nothing, no adjustment in the existing topography for the placement of buildings. But even with the roads, um, oh, that's. I don't know if you have it. It's this one here. I don't know if you have a slide of this. It says, yeah, we do. Okay. It's my concern is uh, is that the slope on some of these roads are excessive. That if you start to measure off this, this the gradient of some of these roads, they're quite steep. Um, I haven't quite got to it. You're getting there. You keep going. Oh yeah. Well, I, I don't know if you can see that. That's pretty dull. This road right over here, and the uh, yes, you can see these are one foot increments, and they are it's really quite steep. Those are one foot increments, right? Yeah, right. Okay, so you can. But over forty feet, and I, I, it, it, but let me ask, let me ask this question because is this one inch equals forty feet? Is this the document? Is it accurate? Correct? I don't I don't know if it, if it was reduced when it was. Because that will make some differences to, in this discussion, but I, the, but if uh, this is drawn to scale and it's one foot, that the that's as much as twenty to twenty five percent. Now, if it's if it's not, I, I do want the city to verify this. Yeah. And we have to do that. Uh, my engineer, who's I know done other plans for city, Matt Weber, uh, he knows the requirements. We have requirements of our own. Right. They, they just look really steep, yeah. and that's I, I guess and so. That's this, yeah. this is preliminary. So. That's going to be one of my concerns is that the slope of the streets and the adjoining, adjoining sidewalks. Yeah, we don't usually at all uh, ex exceed, we don't want to exceed like 7% for I know, uh, I know. Well, that's right. why maybe this has been reduced in scale. Yeah. I don't know. I will check that, though. It, well, I'd, have, it, I'd like everyone it, to check that. Okay. Along the same line, when I look at some of the placement of the buildings, some of the building sites... Uh, it's hard to see because of the, it's quite washed out. But it appeared over the length of a building 
that there was as much as 8 to 10 feet of fall, maybe almost 12 feet in some place. I just counted the – this isn't a scale thing. I just right. counted topo lines. Now, I know you haven't adjusted them yet, but as you adjust them, you're going to have to make an uh, – you're going to have to deal with as much as a – Eight foot variation in the length of a building. It, it, How do you? I, my, well, I have a question. How do you intend to do that? Are well, gonna, we will. Well, first of all, the if it's eight per, eight percent or eight feet feet, that would never work. So typically, the most we would ever have between buildings <coughs> is about a foot, maybe a foot and a half. So sometimes you have to plateau the land, and then right. and then you make up grade sometimes between buildings. Like we have buildings here, and then we don't have any buildings for another hundred feet. But there's a couple buildings. I, I just take the building and count the, the number of, and I know they are not adjusted yet, but I count the number of topo lines crossing the building, and some of them are six feet, seven feet, eight feet. So you're going to have to adapt your grading to deal with that. Now, if you have situations where the, where the grading around the building is not just at grade, but you, you're, you're dropping it down, Architecturally, we would want that to all be finished surface. You know. Oh, right. Now, in some know. okay, so what you might get, and you, and you say, especially when you're going front to back, yeah. where you trace drop, we could possibly have either a stem wall in the back of the building, or even in those cases, create a, a basement, maybe. Yeah, well, a walk out basement. I, I'm just kind of, br I'm just yeah. observing the, the stuff that's in front of me now, and I'm bringing to the point well, I, to your attention my concern that the topography would has to be dealt with in the design of the building whether you whether you step down the units right or if it's a flat a single plane you know that that you're dealing with four feet on one end four feet at oh. the other end that has to be addressed or it's not going no, to yeah, I don't understand that understand? I actually I'm a civil engineer also okay, so you know exactly, so I know exactly, you know exactly what, you're what I'm talking about, about. <laughs> but I'm, I'm saying that I've, I've picked off a number of situations on this plan okay. that need to be it, it concerns me because and if you do con deal with it like I say like you have a stem wall or an exposed foundation it, that it has to be architecturally finished right. if it's brick above the brick has to go finishes architectural finishes have to go to grade right Okay, no, that, I understand. That's, that's part of my concern. Okay. Is that a motion? Um, but this is preliminary, right? So we'll, we'll, right. we'll get. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, sure. Perf approve with. Uh, I, I, I did want to. I went through the um, some of the conditions. And I just wanted to clarify one of them. It really had to do with uh, the sidewalks. Um, I know they have five feet, and that's fine. But it says here about having sidewalks in front of the villas, okay, which I understand that. But there's areas where we don't have, across the street, where we have no uh, villas. Or there's villas. If, if you look at it, uh, if you go up that route right there, there's side, there'll be sidewalks on both sides. But let's say I come down the, the further side on that side. Am I putting villa a sidewalk all the way down that inner circle there, or just the outside circle? Because we do want people to walk everywhere. But you know, if there's if I have a sidewalk that there's no villas against it, I'm, I don't plan on putting sidewalks against it. I'm assuming that people will just walk around the outside of the sidewalks. If I'm being clear. Yes, you're being clear. Uh, let's, let's start with the concept that everybody should be able to walk to the clubhouse. Yes, everybody will be able to walk to the clubhouse. Okay. From both sides of the street. Right. And they'll also have a connection. We'll make a make sure a connection to our main building up front. Uh, and then I, I'll let the city speak for themselves. So I'm, I'm saying that if you're at that point right there, right there, do I need sidewalks there? If I have sidewalks on our side, they go all the way to the clubhouse. But you have units on this side. How do they I mean, get you, to the You don't conference? want it to be broken up either. I mean, you want it to have some sort of continuity. So, I mean, we'll work with you in terms of coming up with a plan. Okay, yeah. But, uh, yeah, I, I think you don't want to have a sidewalk to nowhere either. Right. No, I agree. But, I mean, like, there's certain areas that there's no villas at all. No, like, if you had a sidewalk <clears> here, <throat> that would take you to the clubhouse. Right. Going in this direction. on the, But I think there should be at least one sidewalk around all the driveways. And there is. But say you, wait, we just drew that and say you're on uh, the bottom. Yeah, go up, here, up, up, then here, and turn to the right. And you go. No, no, down, no. right there, turn right. Turn and right. That whole area there, I don't think I'd put a sidewalk there. All the way around. That's fine. Yeah. 
Well, that's what I'm saying. Here's the thought. Here's your clubhouse. The sidewalk should be on the side of the street with the clubhouse. Right, and you're right. That's probably that's wrong. An example. Right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, <laughs> but I wouldn't put we're one just, on the We're just talking side. here, you know? Yeah. I, so, it's important so you should yeah. be able to walk from these buildings yes. to the clubhouse by right. means of a sidewalk. Okay. Same with these. Same with these. Now, these guys are on the wrong side of the street, though you, I guess you could have them cross the street or walk they to the corner. They have to cross the street no matter what. Yeah, so someplace you walk to the corner and then cross over. Maybe that's what I'm saying. Maybe you don't need sidewalks. Th that's all I'm saying. And maybe yes. you don't need sidewalks. But I, I will mm -hmm. defer to the city on that if they want, whatever they want. And, yeah, and that's really the only question I had. I understood everything else. I was uh, fine with everything else that was written. That's so is that a motion? I know you're trying to get a motion out of this. Yeah. Uh, so, is that an additional motion? No, they have that. You have the sidewalk yeah. issue in there. That you'll work it out in the final plan. Let's make an a motion for approval with eight conditions and nine. It, oh, nine. I'm sorry, nine, nine conditions. Secondary access. Nine conditions, to, and a lot of this will be resolved in the final side plan. Second. Mr. Tiedemann. Yes. Mr. Varga. Yes. Mr. Cicero. Yes. Mr. Cook. Yes. Mr. Perkovich. Yes. And Mr. Snow. Yes. Go. One more, don't I? Yep. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. One, one more. more. I'm more. sorry. I forgot. I forgot again. Forgot. It's the village. This is. Yes. I'd like to make a recommendation of a number, uh, limit the number of uh, submissions you can have on one agenda. <laughs> or the ones I speak to. No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this is also preliminary, right? Preliminary. Well, this is um, for our, we had a site plan here on this project previously. Uh, and as I mentioned earlier, we went from a three story, two story to one story. Now it's two, three stories. The buildings are uh, <laughs> square footage wise, and I'll clarify this with the city, they are the same size. Uh, so we're really just going for a revised site plan because the plan has changed when I went from two buildings to one building. Uh, I've looked at all the conditions. I understand all the conditions. Do you agree with all the conditions? Yes. I have a pretty picture here somewhere. There it is. I know you've mentioned a number of times that it's a smaller, sm same square footage. Yeah. But the buildings are actually larger in footprint. Well, I, I know you've absorbed another building that's right. not there now. But the buildings are actually larger than they were. They're not smaller than they were. And well, not I the guess same. if you took, I don't know, if you look at that one, look yeah. at the two story and a one story. So go to the right. Well, you have you have a that's the two that's the two story there yeah. which should be very close to the original the building I'm doing now, but I'm getting rid of the building on the bottom that whole yes. don't it that goes away. Well, it, that it, building does get longer on that and, yes. that building. Yeah, it gets it's it also gets closer right here. Yes. This and it gets closer to the sidewalk here, so the buildings are longer. Right. Larger footprint, right. three stories. Three stories. Now Don't that have footprint. This building. I, under, right. I understand. I'm just yeah. to clarify in everybody's mind, the buildings are closer or larger footprint. Right. And some of the largeness is creating a little push on your site. Yes, it is. Right. Okay. Now, one thing I want to clarify just for staff is the footprint you see is for first floor, especially the, that building. That footprint doesn't go up three floors, just you know. Yes. Okay. Because there were some questions regarding square footage. Well, if you look at the main building there, where it bumps out in the front and the back, the back there is, is a swimming pool goes there, there's some dining rooms that go there, but they're only on the first floor. 
It doesn't go up three floors. And the same with the lobby in the front. The lobby is like two stories high. Yeah, they're but, two, they're, they're, yeah right. I understand. And if you take the if you take the footprint and multiply by three, you're going to come up with too high a number. That's what I'm saying. Right. Okay. Now, can we? Okay. Yeah. Get back to the floor plan. Right. So, where do the buildings connect? I know it wasn't clear on this. Uh, there's a little little connection here. It's a connection, so you can't go between buildings okay. between assist living and member. Those buildings are really close together now. Yeah, uh, it, it causes us to do different kind of uh, construction. You've got to fire rate those two walls and no yeah. openings yes. and all that kind of stuff, and fire barrier in those connections. Yeah, all right. You know, we know that. I, yeah. All right. Uh, I just I just mentioned it because. Mm -hmm. That's the consequence of sh short getting the buildings closer to one another. I know. Our right. architect, just you know, architects is EPD. Yeah, I know. Worked with, that's who, right. who architect is. Okay. They're very aware of those items. Okay. Good. Okay. Good. Um, is this the proposed plan? Yeah. Because there's a nicer plan over here. But uh, so the. <laughs> well, yeah. Here, here's the thing with the uh, sidewalks. You know about that. You got. You got yeah. that. Yeah. Now you have a. You have a nice elevation. Of course, everyone shows the elevation at the entrance because that's the most interesting thing to look at. Now, that's the entrance. That's now, what's happening? Can you, can you give us some bite at the apple about what these other buildings are going to look like? Well, they'll still be the same. They'll still be the same stone. Well, well they... The, the yeah. stone may not go as high. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm getting at. But the front entrance goes that high. Um, well, here's an example. Uh, you, do, you get a, a little taste of this elevation that at this beyond this point. Now this shows stone here, and, but yeah, it, doesn't, we, it doesn't show that on the elevations. That the elevation, because all you show is a, a small, a small strip of, of stone, right. below the window so Right, and in fact, this, the building I showed when I got my my first, we've changed it since then. We've actually upgraded our buildings. Then we had a lot of drive it. There's no drive it on these buildings anymore. It's either some type of um synthetic stucco or i mean no, what, no what, stucco. what's what's oh okay well yeah. when you come when you come when we get the final review because this shows this has an area that looks like some kind of stucco. no that's right. well it, which one that's actually a sh now it's a shingle it's like a okay all right, well, all right. i guess just yeah. a preliminary reaction but I'm, okay. I'm suggesting that the little three foot band of stone yeah. When the building's three foot tall or three stories tall, and it's just right now, it just shows it as vinyl or, or clapboard siding and windows. We'd need to see some more relief. Well, I'll, more I'll show stone. you. This was just one elevation, as you said. I understand, but I will I, show. I'm getting a peak. Yeah. I'm getting a peak over here of what okay. the what the rest of the building right. looks like, right? And the best rest of the building is only three feet of well, stone. If you, and if you look at this elevation, this is the front main building. Yeah. And I don't know if you can zoom left or right. See, I see. Uh, yeah. Okay. Well, see, I'm seeing stone up here. Yeah. I'm seeing, okay. You're going in the right direction. Yeah. I, I'll, I'll amend my comments until we see the. Yeah, we actually case. actually upgrade our building from what it's been. Okay. okay. Just just trying to point you in the right direction. You built. You know, they're relatively attractive, and if you get that. Good. We're going for the lodge look. I understand. I got you. But this is for this is first pass, right? This is preliminary. Mr. Chairman, yes. Quick question: um, the villas that we just talked about, they're going to have access to this area as well, yes, right? Yes, they will. For Go. swimming or the yeah. dining room or something yeah. like that. They have so, access. I can't tell you they'll use it, but understood. Yes. But how are they? Yeah, you know, when I'm looking at Larry, if you can go back to like just the there you go. I see the villas down to the bottom left. And we talked about sidewalks up yeah. to the clubhouse. And how are they getting from the from there? If let's say they want they want to walk all the way. Well, what this is in Toronto, there was a sidewalk that we didn't extend there. Right. There also will be a sidewalk there if you move to the. Is there well, an entrance back here somewhere? I I see the dumpster. I don't want you know. That shouldn't be where they sneak into the building. I have to walk past. No, the no, no, no. That actually you'll, you'll walk a path, not at the dumpster. You keep walking to where. Yeah. If you see where all that landscaping. is. That outside area, that's an, where they... There's have. an entrance there? That's entrance, okay. yeah. Okay. That's right off the dining room, actually. Okay. So we're going to make it easy for the people in yeah, the we'll village to there. get I, over there. That's important to us. Well, we want people to keep walking around. Right. Now, if they drive here, they would park in front. Yes, and that's, as you'll see, we, we 
we're over the code for parking. One reason that is. We're moving yeah, the cars around on site. Yeah. So we, doing, al we allowed for that. Not doing golf carts or anything like that, are we? Well, we haven't talked about that. <laughs> why? Do you like them or don't like them? Not a fan, <laughs> but that's why I'm asking. <laughs> some of the some of the ten, the villas would like to have golf carts. Sure, set of cars. Yeah, I mean they don't want to take their whole car there. It'd be nice just on a nice day, just take your golf cart. Yeah. Does the city does the city have an opinion about golf carts being used? Well, there is a putting green on the back there, so <laughs> yeah, of course it's a golf course. <laughs> Solved. <laughs> Problem is solved. All right. Well, is that a good. motion? Yeah. Uh, I'm looking for comments. Yeah, I'm good. Okay. Good. Yeah. Motion. Uh, I didn't see the number of conditions. Eleven. Eleven conditions. But be aware that you know we're, we'll take another close look at this when we get the final. Oh, proposal. I know. Okay. <laughs> That's not a condition. <laughs> That's another Second. Mr. Peterman. Yes. Mr. Varga. Yes. Mr. Cicero. Yes. Mr. Cook. Yes. Mr. Perkovich. Yes. And Mr. Snow. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. It's been a long time coming, huh? Mr. Chairman, I do have one item just to briefly discuss. Um, it's in when, uh, with regard to the at-home decor superstore. Um, we've been working with them for uh, quite a while now on, on the final revisions uh, to the uh, project. Um, Mr. Uh, Decker uh, did issue um, approval on, on the plans. However, we've been going back and forth on the uh, landscaping. And the one item, and, and it's a little bit hard to see there, um, that is the approved landscape plan. And when we originally um, uh, did approve um, the project, the uh, intent was to uh, cut out um, an area in the front sidewalk for landscaping. However, they are now asking, we just received a letter today uh, that they, if they could get um, um, some relief from that um, uh, for a couple of reasons. They indicate that the, the sidewalk is only 10 feet across at the widest point. Um, this will effectively, by, by cutting this area out, it will limit the sidewalk to a, a seven feet wide. Um, and the usable width of the sidewalk combined with the landscape beds may be somewhat limiting. The second area, the second reason that they don't want to cut out landscape beds uh, into the existing sidewalk is it's, um, it allows a path for water to infiltrate into the building, which um, um, I know we had spoken with uh, Mr. Decker about that, and he did not disagree with that comment. They would like to, in lieu of cutting out and putting landscape beds in, which were essentially just going to be boxwoods, which were going to be very, very low, uh, they would like to put in some um, planter boxes instead. And so I, I, I didn't know if this is something that you felt you would rather see in front of you again as a review, or if this was something you were comfortable with us moving forward with and approving, um, they're again asking for uh, that change out. Uh, and I, I did speak with our landscape architect about it this afternoon, and he indicated, you know, as long as the plantings are provided are substantial enough, he, you know, really the, the boxwoods, again, aren't very big or substantial anyway. If the planters that would be 18 inches high um, would again have a year-round type of, of, you know, planting that he would be comfortable with that as long as you are comfortable with that. So I guess I'm just looking for a nod that we can go ahead and work with the applicant on that unless you want to see them come back. How big are the planters that they're proposing? 18 inches? Deep? 18 by 18. 18 by 18? I'm sorry, five feet, oh. five feet long okay. by 18 inches wide and 18 inches high. And as long as they're not like the ones we just saw a picture of on 615. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. A little better than that. Right. Um, are these commercially purchased plants? Well, they said the boxes are made from solid PVC material that are not, um, that will not rot or deform and have a lifetime guarantee and are, equip are equipped with a self-watering system. So 
self okay that was my next question self watering system is there any way we can ask them to guarantee the life of these plants i mean you know the trouble with putting them in these boxes is that after 5 years they become very large ashtrays you know there's nothing left growing in them so if it's a self watering system that sounds good and can we ask them to put up a I don't know what movie do you bond you they have a bond that says that this stuff will last for more than 15 minutes I mean we do have a bond we do we would have a one year bond on it yeah. well we would probably want to do that at least with these and, and it would they be have to be the self watering type right and it would be our responsibility to make sure if they do you know rot out and die that they would have to be replaced so I'm, I'm fine. With okay. With you guys. Okay. That's all I had. Thank you. Anything else for the cause? Okay. I entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved.